Hey, I'm here. Great to have you here watching Speechless tonight from the SEC studios in White Bear Lake. And we've got another fascinating show that you're going to want to call in with your comments or questions. We're talking about Obamacare, how it affects Minnesota. Our guest tonight, who has been one of the top 100 most powerful persons in health care, also been on uh, Fox Channel Glenn Beck show when it was on there, CNN, NBC Today, NBC Nightly News, a whole bunch of articles, Twyla Brace from Citizen Council for Health Freedom will be on the show to talk all things Obamacare and how it affects you as a Minnesotan. So uh, stay tuned and get ready for your comments and questions uh, and call in. Now, um, before we get into that, we're going to discuss some other and give some updates on issues that we've talked about in the past. And I don't want any call-ins on this because we need to get this done and move on uh, for the, the, the big show <laughs> tonight. Okay, uh, as you know and have heard in the U.S. Senate, and maybe you haven't heard, but the nuclear option has been um, pushed by the U.S. Senate and which means filibusters will be eliminated and this is uh, a terrible thing that's taken place and the Senate had to break the rules in order to and uh, have this rule come about. Uh, the other issue is that and it's all about two US uh, two appointments to the Washington DC uh, Court of Appeals and this happened in the past where the Republicans were trying to appoint some new justices to that seat. But in that process, what was found out was that the U.S., uh, the Washington, D.C. courts had half the caseload of other jurisdictions, uh, appellate jurisdictions. And so now, um, without and so George Bush backed down. Okay, we don't need them there. These judges are needed in other areas. And uh, Senator Obama at that time and uh, Senator Reid put up a big stink about George Bush uh, appointing justices to these seats. And now here's what we got. Um, now we get a filibuster because they want to now appoint judges to this uh, circuit court and there's no need. So it, it's a big deal. It's, it's a terrible thing that's happened. Okay, um, now as you've known in the last number of shows, we've had uh, Michelle McDonald, who's been an attorney fighting for family rights and uh, for parents who have not been able to see their kids on this show. And she is, in my opinion, the next Jill Clark. They are going after her, and they're going after her hard. And so I've been able to find out some of the charges that she has against her now. Of course, she was arrested, had to defend one of her clients uh, in court while Michelle McDonald was in handcuffs. Can you imagine being an attorney in handcuffs defending your client when the court has taken all your documents away and they knew where they were and they wouldn't tell her, the attorney, where her documents were and her paperwork, which is attorney-client privilege, but the court took them and had them? It's, it's amazing. Uh, and then I discovered not only were, uh, did that take place, but in uh, April of this, this year, she had been arrested for drunk driving. And the charges that were leveled against her in the drunk driving were refusal to submit to a test, uh, which is a third degree uh, misdemeanor, DWI a fourth degree misdemeanor. Here's the, here's the interesting thing. She submitted to a test. She took the breathalyzer test from the officers. The officers showed that it said 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. There was no alcohol on her breath, but she is still being charged, and she had a pretrial today on that uh, drunk driving case. But she was smart enough so that she ended up going to the hospital once 
you got a DWI charge against you and they let you go, they don't arrest you, they let her go. So uh, Michelle and her husband went right to the hospital, took a blood test, no alcohol, no drugs in her system. This is, she is being persecuted, in my opinion, by the courts for her standing up for family values and um, constitutional rights of parents. Uh, in this uh, process, and, and one of the reasons is she filed amicus briefs on behalf of some of Jill Clark's clients who the court did not like. And, and this, is, this is brutal, uh, what's going on. So now, why she was arrested while she was in the process of a civil hearing for a client of hers, she was charged with contempt of court, willful disobedience to court mandate, uh, section 588.20, Subdivision two, section section two, subdivision four, uh, which means every person who commits contempt of court of any one of the following kinds is guilty of a misdemeanor. And this specific charge is wilf willful disobedience to the lawful process or other mandate of a court other than uh, I can't read my own writing other than um, described in subdivision one. Okay. Oh, and what, what is that? What, what was the evidence? What did she do there? Okay, and then she was also charged with obstruction of legal process, lawful um, execution of legal process, and that section 609.50, uh, subdivision 1, section 1, obstruction of legal process, arrest, or firefighting. Subdivision 1, crime. Whoever intentionally does any other, uh, any of the following may be sentenced as provided in subdivision two. So, what is this uh, thing that she has done? Obstructs, hinders, or uh, pro, um, I can't remember writing again. Uh, the lawful execution of any legal process, civil or criminal, or uh, apprehension of another on a charges of conviction of a criminal offense. Uh, I think the word is there, hinders or prevents the lawful execution of any legal process. So, uh, and the fines there, if that obstruction of that legal process causes death, there's a severe penalty. If it causes bodily injury, there's a severe penalty. If it just obstructs the process, then it can be a, a misdemeanor, 90 days, and a thousand dollar fine. So I'm sure it's the third level if there's anything they have on her. So, but what did she do? You know, that's the big thing. But, you know, this is, a, this is something that happens to uh, my attorneys and my guests that come on my show that talk about the courts and family law process. Uh, they get harassed by the courts, in my opinion, and it's happening to her. Another guest on my show, Del Nathan, uh, who had his li attorney's license revoked because he refused to give client uh, information to the court that was personal information between the attorney and the client. They took away his license. Now the uh, attorney's uh, uh, practice board uh, is going after Del Nathan for practicing without a license. And they're accusing him of uh, practicing the law. And he doesn't have a license, so therefore he can't practice the law. But is he practicing the law if he doesn't charge anybody? And if he doesn't, uh, but he just helps them out. And there is no statute against helping people out with legal papers. Anybody can do that. Okay? Practicing the law is if you charge somebody in helping them uh, with their legal issues. And he has not done that. And so this is another form of harassment because of what's going on down in the legislature and the emphasis that is exposing the courts for their misdeeds, their misdemeanors, their bad behavior, and their corruption. And Dell is definitely part of that, as well as Michelle McDonald. And uh, of course, Jill Clark was, and they took away her license. So it's, uh, it's not a pretty sight out there, what's going on in our courts, but uh, it's the price 
of uh, liberty. Um, those that don't want it will try to do everything they can do to take it away from you. All right, and last, one last thing before we get to our guests uh, tonight is there was another hearing in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee today on the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And um, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was there to testify in support of the bill. It did not go as long as, the hearing did not last as long as they thought. Uh, but it was interesting that it was just a dog and pony show. And, but one of the comments that came out in this proceeding was this treaty does not help the United States in any way because the United States is already above and beyond the treaty. But what this treaty will do is it will hinder the United States for parents who have kids with disabilities and it will come in and tell those uh, parents how to raise their children. And now we'll have foreign countries telling us and for the first time ever getting into the family and getting into our domestic policy and being able to bind um, our families and foreign countries telling us how to handle our domestic policy. And that's not the purpose of a treaty and it should be uh, rejected and, and Senator Kerry couldn't answer the tough questions and couldn't make assurances. And the bottom line, there's just no need for it. And their only reason is, well, we can't be at the table if we don't sign the treaty and we can't encourage other countries to sign the treaty if we're not signing the treaty, yet we're out there promoting the treaty. Well, you shouldn't be out there promoting the treaty, but all these other nations that have signed on, that's their business, okay? And they may have done it to their own peril. That doesn't mean we do it to our own peril. So that's... Um, Big stuff, just some updates. We'll cover them more in future shows and, and let you know what's going on.